This video will look at card pages in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Here I'm looking at an example of a customer card page. And what we can see is we have a similar structure to the list pages that the other video was looking at. I have the name and the number for this specific record, this customer. Then I have a command bar. So from here for this customer, I could launch a new document of these types. I can request approval, for example. Relating to the customer, I can go and investigate or create new ship to addresses, for example, or add new contacts. Show attached will let me add links to stored centrally available documents or create a note. That will be explored in a, a following video. If I go to actions, new documents specifically will give me access to the other documents that I might want to create. Perhaps the less frequently used ones for this role center that I'm working in, the sales order processor role center. I can access workflow. I can look at functions, for example, perhaps set up templates or utilize templates. Post a cache receipt via one of these two methods or look at the sales journal. If I use navigate on the customer, it'll let me look into or set up their dimensions, create cross references so we can make orders using their item references and it correlate to our item references, for example. On history, I can see their ledger entries, their statistics, the trading pattern with these guys over a recent period. I can set up specific price and discount patterns. Look at sales specifics. Investigate documents. And look into service if you're working with the premium license. Each of these little drop downs, you notice they have the pin option here. If I've chosen a drop down on the command bar, I can pin that so it will remain in place. And if I don't wish to keep it any further, I can unpin that part of the command bar. I will always keep this top section of the command bar visible. Um, at the top of the screen, I have a couple of options up here that might be of interest. You'll notice this is actually in edit mode, so it would be possible to change this information. Now that's fine if that's what I intend to do. However, Control-Z will undo that. If I don't wish to make changes, and I want to avoid doing that accidentally, perhaps I should put it into read-only mode rather than edit mode. By default, the page will open edit mode. Clicking this puts in read-only, and now I can't delete anything by mistake. Okay, so that's just a, a nice way of working. Next to it, I've got add a new entry. This will give me the templates and let me start to create a new customer using one of the standard templates in the system. Or if I really want to, I could delete this record, but I don't wish to. Okay, moving down the page, what you'll notice is you have a, a tab structure. Now these are known as fast tabs. We can click to expand or collapse them. So they're currently all collapsed fast tabs. If I click the general fast tab in its top section, it opens up. I also have a show more and show less. So by default, it will actually open in this view. What I'm seeing now is the standard fields. When I collapse the fast tab, some promoted fields will always display. So on each of these five fast tabs here, there are some fields that will have visibility of at all times. When I click to open the fast tab, I see the standard fields. If I click show more, we see the additional fields as well. This is meant to avoid you having to scroll down too much and have too much information that you don't need at all times. So what you can actually do is just open up the tab you wish to work with. When I come off this record and go on to a different record but of the same type, so for example, customer 30,000, the card page will open in the same fashion. The system remembers my preferences about whether it should be fully open, partly opened, or which ones, which tabs should be open or not. Staying with the overall structure on the right hand side, we have these um, fact boxes, a customer picture. Here it's using the contacts photograph. This could be a company logo. Underneath that, I have access to any attached documents. I'd click the number there if there's a one or a two, it'll take me to those attached documents. 
I have a fact box here full of these small tiles, these queues, that will take me directly to this company's documents. So here I can see they have five ongoing sales orders, and they've already got two posted sales invoices. So if I were to click that too, this is live information. When I come to the page, this will always be update, up to date. I can have quick access to those two sales invoices. Simply click the document number, and you go through to that actual record. To come off any of these popped out pages, I can simply click in the grey part, part here, or I can click back. I'm now back at the list view of those two posted sales invoices, click the grey, again, close it down that page for me, and then back at the customer card. So underneath these little tiles, these queues, I also have the customer statistics, which is a load of flow fields. So each of these are basically a hyperlink, where I see a number, if I click that number, it will take me through to the entries that make up that balance LCY, that balance in local currency. So here's all their open ledger entries. Now at this point you might not want to see the fact box pane on the right hand side, so simply click the little I in the circle to collapse that out of the way, and now I can see, yeah, these all have a remaining amount, they're all the open entries that make up that prior balance that I just clicked. Took them off this page, simply click the grey or the back arrow. Um, further down are the fact boxes, there's one showing me the dimensions that are currently defaulted for this customer, so any documents I create will utilise these dimensions for reporting, and if I've got any links or notes that I've set for this account. For quick comparison here, if I use the tell me search function, just go to a, a vendors page, So on a vendor card page, we see the same kind of pattern. We have a command bar with drop-down options for what I might wish to do with this record, or create, or transactional documents might wish to create for this record. Underneath that, I have the fast tabs that I can expand and collapse to make sure I only see the information I really want to see. With the show more, and show less to fine tune the fields that display. And again, on the right hand side, I have fact boxes giving me summary information. Similarly, on the items, the item list page gives me access to an item card, which has the same kind of structure. Here you might find the picture functionality much more useful to display an image of the actual item involved. And you'll see the fact boxes are slightly different. We have an item attributes, so we can classify our specific items with particular attributes that have been set up in the background to allow us to filter down lists to find related items. You'll notice each of these three pages, the customer card page, the vendor card page, the item card page, has similar kind of structure has fast tabs, but the actual fast tab might vary. So here we have planning. We can look into the, the setup for the planning for this particular, or the purchase replenishment for this particular item. And to close these down, I use escape, the back arrow, or the gray bar. To get myself back to where I started, which was the customer card page.